Hi, how's everybody doing today? This is Sean, and I'm here with a response video to Sports Car Radio. Um, the other day, before I get involved in this, before I say another word, if you have little kids, please get them out of the room. This, this video is not for little children. This is adult time talk, and I'm getting ready to rip into these people, and it's going to be pretty brutal. So if you've got little kids around, please get them out of the room. Um, it's not for little children. Now, let's get into the beef of the matter. Before I get into this bullshit with this Mickey Mantle uh, card that sold for $12 million, before I get into any of that, a couple days ago, the sports car radio guy, was uh, he posted something on YouTube about uh, Dave Coleman, or whatever the fuck his name is, that runs uh, SCG. This dude was affiliated with Bill Mastro back in the day, and Mosser, and all these people were known trimmers. And PSA uh, graded this card. It was an Ernest Wagner T206. They graded this card at 8.5 that was trimmed. There was no doubt about it. It was trimmed. That card was sold to Wayne Gretzky back in the 90s. And then it was sold again to uh, Ken, Ken, uh, Ken Kendrick of the Arizona Cardinals. And he spent like $2 million on it back in 2002 or whatever the fuck it was. So... This shit has been going on. These vintage cards, he's trimming. It's a money laundering fucking operation. Before I get into that bullshit, I'm going to tell you what happened. The other, he posted this shit, like I was saying, about this guy Dave Coleman uh, being a trimmer. And he's like, well, I've been in, you know, doing sports card radio uh, since 2012. And we've been on the circuit for a while. And uh, we know all the ins and outs. And you little kids out there that just started doing the business. You don't really know anything. Because me and my brother, my grandparents left us a fucking half a million dollars. And we we're all fucking douchebags that never really did anything where I'd like to die. Uh, die. Uh, that kind of shit. Because California is full of them kind of fucking scumbags. And when I was growing up in Florida, I went to one of the richest schools in the area. And my friends, some of my friends were driving fucking Porsches to school. Because their dads were like uh, a, a biologists and a micro a fucking physics and all kinds of shit these people were into. Uh, and they didn't act like this. Most of my friends, would, you wouldn't even know they were rich be, unless you seen them driving a car and they were busting their dad's balls by taking their car when he went on vacation to school just to mess with people. My one buddy, Andy Pyle, took his dad's Ferrari and parked it in the fucking principal's uh, spot when we were in, uh, juniors in high school. These are kind of fun stuff that goes on. Not these douchebags. They go around and rag on people and say all kinds of shit, but they can't take it. So I, I made a comment. I was kidding around. I was like, what are you, mad because Dave, uh, Dave trimmed your mom's beard? And then all of his little cronies are like, oh, you can't be talking about people's mom's jokes and you can't say sister jokes. I'll say whatever the fuck I want to say. I'll say whatever the fuck I want to say. Who the fuck are you to tell me who I, what I can say and what I can't say? I was joking around. And by the way, I didn't really mean to say that his, you know, Dave trimmed his mom's beard. I meant to say that Dave shaved his mom's back and he might not recognize her when he sees her. Because uh, she looked like a fucking Sasquatch. And then uh, that's what I have to say. You want to rag on Mojo for washing pools and doing whatever the hell he does? I don't care. He's a fucking grifter. He sells sports cards. He's been grifting. You guys hate on that guy. Say all kinds of shit about him. And if I was Mojo and I seen you at a card shop, I'd bust you right in your fucking mouth. I don't care how tall you are. I'm six foot two. I'm five foot seven and I'm fucking 215 pounds and I'll knock you the fuck out. That's how I am. I don't give a shit how big you are. You want to talk shit about people, but you can't take it. And this bullshit about Mickey Mantle card, the 1951 fucking tops, uh, first year edition that they did the tops. Mickey Mantle was not a nice guy. Okay. Neither was Ty Cobb or none of these people. Mickey Mantle was a fucking alcoholic. He was a fucking dick to people until the end of his fucking lifetime when he had to have a liver transplant. Then he was all cool with people trying to raise money because he fucking drank every goddamn day and fucked his liver up and needed money to get a fucking liver transplant. And you guys idolize these kind of people. 
You idolize people like Ty Cobb that sharpened their fucking spikes to try to fucking hurt people. You idolize these dicks. Mickey Mantle, let me tell you something here. Let's look at Mickey Mantle's stats. The guy played 2,400 games, had uh, 8,102 at-bats. He had 1,676 runs. He had 2,415 hits. He had 1,529 RBIs. He had a total of 536 uh, home runs, and he had 153 stolen base. Uh, stolen ba uh, bases. Okay. Now let's 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 look at at, at fucking uh, Ernest Wagner. Ernest Wagner played two thousand four hundred and thirty three games. He had nine thousand three thirty four at bats, and he had one thousand seven hundred and thirty nine runs, and he had three thousand four hundred and twenty hits, and he had one hundred and one career home runs. And he had 1,732 RBIs and 723 stolen bases. Okay? Besides the home runs and besides this shit, he did play 21 years and Mickey Mantle played 18 years. Okay, look, that's what I'm giving you with that. Now, in modern times, let's look with Barry Bonds' stats. Barry Bonds played 2,986 games. He had 9,847 at-bats. He had 2,227 runs. He had 2,935 hits. He had 1,996 RBIs. He had 762 home runs and 514 stolen bases. Barry Bonds offensively is the greatest player in the history of baseball. No hands down don't want to hear about steroids. The only reason why Barry Bonds isn't in the fucking Hall of Fame is because the writers are racist. They idolize Mickey Mantle that was a white drunk that played for the New York Yankees. And they bashed Barry Bonds because they fucking went after his dad, Bobby Bonds, for being an alcoholic and not getting the treatment that he needed and the help that he needed. And they bashed him. So Barry Bonds going up, seeing how the writers did his dad, and they seen how they treated him, how he treated Mickey Mantle, which was a white guy. Baseball is one of the most racist uh, games, from historically speaking, that professional sports that the world has ever seen. What they did to Jackie Robinson was nothing in that movie compared to what they really did to him in real life. Baseball was full of racism and full of hatred towards black people. That's why you don't have all these black people in the Hall of Fame. Because the writers are racist. If it was up to the fans, Barry Bonds would be in the Hall of Fame. And same with Pete Rose. You're not going to let Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame, but you're going to let Ty Cobb in the Hall of Fame, which was the biggest fucking racist asshole ever to be uh, in professional fucking sports because he's a great player. You people worship the worst kind of scumbags on the planet, and that's why our hobby's fucked up with guys like this in there. They can rag on people, they can dish it, but they can't take it. Because I grew up around these kind of scumbags, and I fucking see what they're all about, and they've ruined the, the hobby. They've ruined this shit. They'll never go in and tell you what a fucking drunken asshole Mickey Mantle was, and how rotten he was to people. I grew up doing this shit. I, went to, I was born in 71. By the time he retired in 68, he was, you know, in the 80s and shit. He was trying to raise money because he knows he needed a fucking liver plant, transplant. And he still was fucking drinking. You people worship the, mo the most vile motherfuckers. The same with Trump and Biden. Trump is, Trump is not going after evil people. He's going after people that disagree with him and don't like him. And I'm a hardcore Republican. I've been a Republican since I'm 18 years old. Okay? This dude, you people are being tricked. Okay? None of these people are straight. They're all fucking evil. You worship evil fucking people. You worship, worship the worst kind of fucking scumbags on the planet. These are not nice people. You're buying cards from a guy that was a drunk that wouldn't even give you the fucking time of day if you walk by him.
The same with Derek Jeter. He's not a nice guy either. I met these people in real life, not Mickey Mantle, but I've met Derek before. He was nice in the minors, but once he started playing in the Yankees, he wouldn't even give little kids autographs after games and shit. He hated kids. And you worship these type of fucking scumbags because they can hit a baseball? Who the fuck can't hit a baseball? I'm 50 years old and I can fucking hit a baseball. I've played sports all my life. I just recently found out that they rigged this goddamn games and fucking, they got electronic shit in the fucking baseball, I mean in the footballs. The NFL is rigged and scripted. I used to work 60 fucking five hours a week, dude, and work two jobs and come home on a, you know, have a Saturday off or Sunday off and come home and <clears throat> relax, you know, get myself a beer, have a couple hot dogs and hamburgers on the grill, sit down and watch a game. And, I, and then not knowing it's fucking rigged at that level. I always thought the refs were fucking rigging the games. No, it's totally fucking scripted and rigged. Everything we love in life, these people have ruined it. And you let them do it. You're still voting red and blue. There's no difference between the two of these fucking things. And it goes into the sports car industry too. You worship Mickey Mantle. Who the fuck would pay $12 million for a card like that? The guy's a bad man. I don't like to talk about the dead like that. God bless his soul. At the end of his life, he repented or whatever. And he died from liver. He needed a liver transplant. But this dude right here, listen to the shit this guy says. You dip? Why are you a dip? Let's talk about this Mickey Mantle SGC 9.5 that sold for $12.6 million. The other day, it's the highest price for... This dude right here has a brother. And all the time, he now the brother has the glasses on. And the brother, oh, I got Rolex watches. And I got I got myself two, uh, two uh, what are the fuck them car Teslas. I got two Teslas. Look, dude, you are renting them Teslas. And you're going to write them off for tax uh, purposes. Because you live in California. And that kind of shit, when you have a little business... You would buy something like that because it's a major tax write-off. And as far as your fucking Rolex watches, they're worth fucking dick now. They've, they're they dropping worse than the fucking sports cards. This dude right here flexes on his brother's accomplishments. These are 40-year-old man children. They couldn't survive on their own and do their own shit unless their parents were rich and helped them out like that. The same with that Jeff Wilson. You take these son of a bitches and you stick them in the woods and see if they can survive for a week out there on the land, knowing how to fish, knowing how to take care of themselves. None of that would happen. They'd be crying like a bunch of bitches. These dumb assholes were the kind of guys would take fucking Spanish moss and make a fucking bed out of it and be bit alive by all the fucking bugs in it. You take advice from these fucking assholes. They've been on the fucking internet since 2012 and they barely got 13,000 subscribers. Jesus, you should have a half a million people on your fucking channel. I just started this shit recently, a few years ago, and I got a thousand subscribers because people know I speak the fucking truth and come at you. And then they're trying to fuck with my man over there, John. From sports cards wrecking it because he's tired of this bullshit too. And he's my age and he knows these kind of fucking scumbags. Because he actually lived on the West Coast. And grew up around this kind of fucking bullshit. And knows what he's talking about. The dude was into acting. He was into fucking Hollywood and all that shit when he was younger. He don't come out there and flex on his accomplishments. He's out there trying to take care of his dad that's dying. God bless his soul. These motherfuckers are the kind of people who would take their mom and dad and put them in a fucking retirement home. And hope that they die or whatever so they can get their fucking money. They live in their grandparents' house. They've given everything in life, these kind of assholes. And then they come on the internet telling you about stuff you already fucking know. They're never going to tell you that Mickey Mantle was a scumbag. That fucking was a drunk and did all kinds of shit when he was younger. They're never going to come out and say, hey, you know, Barry Bonds should be in the Hall of Fame because this dude was the greatest offensive player in the history of the game. And I don't give a fuck if Hank Aaron's feelings were hurt at the time or not. He should have played better. Hank Aaron was knocking them bitches back too. People were doing cocaine back in the fucking nine, uh, 60s and 70s when they played it. We're drinking fucking alcohol. That's worse than steroids. 
The pitchers back in the 90s were on steroids. You had guys throwing fucking 105 mile an hour fucking fastballs and shit across the plate. Percival, all kinds of guys like that. The only reason why the steroid thing broke out is because Jose Caseco was a fucking cokehead and drinking a whole bunch of shit and jacked up on fucking drugs and, and steroids and got mad because the A's found out about it and was going to cut him. And so he wrote a book and destroyed Mark McGuire's career, destroyed the fucking the, the, uh, baseball. They had people thinking that fucking Ken Griffey Jr. was taking steroids, which he wasn't. You can tell Ken, Ken was a natural, grew up to be a big man, you know, just a natural, filled in proper. Barry Bonds was on steroids or whatever the hell, st they were supplements. They weren't shooting needles in themselves, some of them were, but there was a su supplement. His friend went to college and had some supplements and they were going after his friend because his friend had needles with DNA with Roger Clemens and other guys like that on it. Not Barry. Barry never got suspended from baseball or nothing like that like the rest of these fucking assholes. Tatis has gotten suspended. For all we know, Tatis could have been taking vitamins and shit that should have done, that, that register up as you being dirty. The reason why all this is like this now is because Jose Caseco is a fucking dick that, that this was a spiteful motherfucker, just like Trump's a spiteful motherfucker. He's not fighting evil. He's fighting people that disagree with him. The man signed over $5 trillion to the wealthiest people in America while you got a $1,400 fucking stimulus check and trying to force a fucking vaccine on people. But all of them. Biden and Harris, the smartest thing that ever come out of those two fucking assholes' mouth was like, don't take that fucking vaccine. And then when he became president, you got to take the vaccine. You didn't take no vaccine, bro. You took a placebo. These kind of guys are fucking scumbags. You people worship people like that that wouldn't give you the time of day, that did rotten shit. You worship the worst kind of people, and that's why God's going to put judgment on you like that. That's why our country's destroyed. We live in a banana fucking republic. Biden has managed to take a perfectly great country and turn it into a banana republic in less than fucking two years. Because you're sheep. You believe anything people say. You never do any investigations. You think Mickey Mantle was the greatest offensive player, the greatest player in the history of the game? You're fucking sadly mistaken. I just told you, just that's Barry Bonds' stats. Ken Griffey's stats are better than that. I better than Mickey Mantle's. How come his card ain't worth $12 million? Because it's a money laundering scheme. The same with fucking comics. The same with uh, artwork. These people are fucking using this hobby as a money laundering fucking scheme. And that guy, Ken, uh, Ken uh, fucking Golden, he's mad because people are on the internet exposing him for all the shit he did in the 90s. He's tired of trolls. We're tired of fucking criminals like you destroying everything in your fu in, in the fucking world and making billions of dollars doing it when you should be in federal fucking prison for the shit you guys are doing to people. What the hell do you do with your money to, to make the world a better place and America a better place? You have $4 billion. You have any fucking organizations where you help homeless people or people like this dick that was a, 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 a what do you call it? Addicted to alcohol? The man was an alcoholic. Did you, do you have any kind of uh, treatment centers up to help people get off the street? No, you drive by like this fucking scumbag and say, oh, there's homeless pieces of shit and that. You would be a homeless piece of shit, motherfucker, if your parents didn't have the fucking money and did all kinds of shady shit before all the IRS caught on to you motherfuckers. That's why it makes it hard on people like us that are honest people just working a job, paying taxes, because the people and his kind of family members for decades screwing the country over, not paying the correct amount of taxes, doing all kinds of fucking money laundering, and really legalized fucking rocketeering that's going on in this in this hobby. You think it's bad now? Biden has got 87,000 fucking agents that he's hiring in the next few years. They're going to come after you fucking scumbags and take everything you have. Because for decades, you and your family 
have been fucking screwing people over, and then you promote guys like this and think that, hey, a $12 million card. You know what you could do with $12 million besides buy a big fucking house in the middle of nowhere with acres and acres of land in a lake, in a pond or whatever? You could help your community. The reason why our country and our world is fucked up because nobody helps their community. I buy a little food every fucking month and donate it to shelters and stuff. I, I give people stuff that I can do, and I'm poorer than these fucking guys. I'm not poor. I have my own place to live, but I, I'm not a millionaire. And if I can do it on the little bit of money that I have, they could do it on the millions of dollars that these people are fucking laundering around. You better fucking pray that I never become an IRS agent because I will fucking come after every influencer on YouTube. I'm already talking to Congress people about this. We need laws. People that break on here and do breaks need to be fucking certified and have to be legally uh, binded. You should be telling the people the odds of what the cards and the chances of you winning this stuff. You should be wearing gloves when you're dealing with high-end cards. They opened up a half a million dollar fucking 86, 80 Fleer box of cards and didn't even have a pair of gloves on. That tells you that it was already searched. They already knew the Jordans are in there. And then they had that fucking lion grifter fucking Jew bastard on there fucking talking shit saying, oh, I hope I get to, and I'll call you that because I'm Jewish myself, so fuck off. Go tell your rabbi with the shit you're pulling on people. They'll probably kick you out of the fucking, <laughs> they probably won't even let you in the synagogue. You fake fucking asshole. They're pumping and dumping Star Wars cards, and every one of these scumbags, all of them, they all regurgitate the same concepts. The same material. I could go to his channel. I can go to AI channel. I could go Ziggy No Sports. I can go to the kid, uh, finance kid, uh, card kid, whatever the fuck they're calling themselves now. And they all regurgitate the same thing. Jeff Wilson, sports card mover and maker, Neon, all of them. All they want is sponsors. All they want to do is make money off YouTube. And this guy would probably suck a cock or suck a fucking bowling ball through a fucking garden hose to get the sponsors that these dudes are getting. That's why he'll never come out and expose anything. I was joking around before, but fuck them. I don't give a shit about these people. I could give a fuck about them. I care about my friends and my family that are getting ripped off by these fucking scumbags, and nobody's doing anything about it, but they'll come out here and try to make fun of some guy for cleaning fucking pools and belittle the dude. Even though he's a fucking grifter, he's probably done more honest hard work than this guy's ever done in his life. He looks like a fucking alcoholic himself. Look at the bags under his eyes. Or he's completely fucking ripped. Like John said, you, you guys are sheep beyond repair. You can't, you're not gonna, you, there's no reaching you. That's why our country's the way it's in. I've been nice before. Then I got my friend Mike. Well, you're a Christian. You shouldn't use profanity. Dude, I'm going to show you what profanity is. When this civil war shit breaks out and they start ripping Christians up like myself, you're going to wish that I was around to help defend you, you fucking soft bitch. You guys are fucking soft. It's time to grow up and, and be hard like a man. You have to put this shit out there. You can't take this kind of stuff off people, letting them grift people and, and, and idolizing fucking evil people and bad people and spending millions of dollars on that shit. I wouldn't doubt it. None of this is, is straight and legit. That guy, you dip Daniel. I think that shit was staged. I think a lot of this stuff is staged. They're just doing this for publicity because they got nothing to talk about. Because after the pandemic, people started going out. They started fishing. They started enjoying their life, doing things. And they got no fucking hobbies besides getting on the internet, talking about uh, sports cards and shit like that. When you look at my channel and you see what I do, I go to Bush Gardens. I share that stuff with you. I go fishing. I share that stuff with you. I go around places. I share that stuff with you. 
I'm exposing the NFL for being rigged and scripted. You think that dick will do that? He might lose a subscriber over it. I said, I fucking exposed the NBA. I called the NBA finals before it fucking happened. I told you that Golden State was going to win 4-2 to two and that Stefan was going to win the MVP. Am I psychic? No. I told you guys that Colorado was going to win. At first, I thought the fucking Lightning was going to win because of the Jumantria shit, and they flipped it on me. And then there's something going on with this color purple that all of them are, that's how you know uh, who's going to win the thing because of that type of shit. Um, my man over there, uh, what is his name? Um, Pearson. He, uh, I did a video on him. He does, he's a Christian and he was talking about the physicians and how they're, these, these Luciferian Masons are all working the uh, sports with this uh with these codes and gematria and colors and stuff which i don't really know much about all that i just know what i see i know a little bit about gematria but i'm fed up with this type of bullshit enough is enough these big these big influencers oh we don't need no negativity in the hobby you're the ones bringing the negativity to the hobby you're idolizing alcoholics and drug addicts and people that were fucking mean and you don't stick up for the people that should be in the Hall of Fame and should be, uh, you know, recognized for their accomplishments. Like Pete Rose. This guy has enough people on his fucking channel where he can go every day and put it out there to where he gets enough influence to where the Major League Baseball would listen and maybe put Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame and Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire and Roger, Roger Clemens. Hey, in the 90s, they didn't have no problem watching him play. People would run home to go watch Roger Clemens pitch. They'd run home to watch Barry Bonds break the record. The man has 700. 762 home runs. And if you take 100 home runs away, he still would have 662 home runs and 514 stolen bases. And he would have more home runs than Mickey Mantle. And he has... Three almost two, three hundred more home uh, uh, stolen bases than Mickey Mantle, and of course you know Ernest Wagner is out the, out, is ridiculous with uh, stolen bases. The man has seven hundred twenty seven stolen bases, and Ty Cobb has like nine hundred stolen bases. These people don't know shit about sports. They don't know dick about what they're talking about, and all they do is regurgitate everything else everybody says. I was making videos about 1984 football and Jeff Wilson buys a 1984 football box and opens it up because that bitch was like, holy shit, all these players are in there? Yeah, these are the kind of guys in the 84 series. I got this off the internet. It's a GMA. They're pretty accurate graders. I can crack this case. I, I, I crack this out of this case, send it in to PSA, it comes back at eight and it'll be worth three times the amount of money that it is in this because it says PSA on it. And this guy, you need in auctions. Same with this. This is the kind of stuff in the 84. The greatest players in the history of fucking football are in that series just about. And of course, in the 81 tops, you have Joe Montana. And I think 82 or 83, um, I think it's 82, um, Marcus Allen, you know. So, you, you have great players that played in the 80s. And they were on cocaine. No, I don't know about this, guys. The guys I just showed you, but you know, Lawrence Taylor was so fucked up, he snapped Joe Theismann's fucking leg on national television. Look that up. Don't eat while you're doing it, because it's disgusting. He literally broke his leg in half. He was so jacked up on coke, he's out of his damn mind. Anybody that follows this bullshit, and this guy can dish it, but he can't take it, you get what you deserve. I can literally have a channel every day going out and exposing what kind of fucking frauds these people are and how many people they have on their, their fucking channel for since 2002 or whatever, or 12, and you only got 13,000 people on your subscription. I mean, that's sad because most people don't like you because you're fucking, you're a cocky scumbag that, or, that tries to fucking flex with your family's money. 
That's like fucking the governor over there in California, knew it, whatever his name is. I don't even pay attention to him. He would not be governor if his aunt wasn't Nancy Pelosi. You think that guy would be governor? The guy was fucking other people's wives and shit. He's a scumbag and you idolize them kind of people. Back in the day, if you did that to someone's wife, the guy that you did that to his wife with would get in, would find you and beat your ass with a fucking baseball bat. And before them times, you would literally be taken outside and stoned to death for that kind of shit, adultery. Because you ruin people's fucking families over that shit. And you, it's, a, it's a sin. Because of that, these, you, you got to wake up to this, folks. Stop fucking around with these people. They don't give a shit about you. They're not, they're, you know, they're just they're in it for the money. That's all they're in it for. And, and they're jealous of each other and want to try to outdo each other. I'm not monetized. I have over a thousand subscribers. I don't care about that. I care about doing things because I like you guys. And I like spending time showing you things and teaching you guys. And I learn from you also. You support pedos in the industry. You support criminals in the industry. You support low-life scumbag, drunken, alcoholic, fucking drug addicts in the industry. That's what you do. And you wonder why our world is fucked up. You wonder why our kids are confused. Because you're a bad parent. You're a bad person yourself. You don't mind somebody being... You're like, oh my God, I can't believe those people robbed that store. Or I can't believe they did the, they're did. they selling drugs. Or I can't believe the, they're doing this. But you don't mind the government doing that. You don't mind the government coming in and taking people out of their homes. Or going into the president's house and stealing his fucking shit. Taking stuff out of his house. Which is staged and psyop anyway. For fuck's sakes, you got the guy from the Proud Boys that staged his own arrest. What the fuck is wrong with these people? It's psyop after psyop. The same with this shit. You mean to tell me that asshole didn't tell, know that he was uh, fucking opening up a fucking fuck, uh, the, the wrong cards? He switched it off camera? That was intentionally done. This arrogant dick you here. You can see a link in the video description for a list. I think I have about a, the top 15 all-time highest-priced sports cards. The thing I find pretty amazing about this card, and I don't know if anybody's talked about it, was that this thing was in a brick screw-down. Just it's not even the same screw down. It's a different one. They took it out of it. John was looking at that too. And I don't even care about what screw down it's in. I don't care what condition it's in. I, it might even be fake for all we know. There's supposed to be a dot here if a, for a real one. You can find the dot and then there's stuff in here that will let you know if it's real. But there's always a dot there. You see it? Right there it is. It's always going to be there. That's one of the things. The dude, one of these guys on here has a bunch of the like a few of these cards and is an expert on that not like that fucking gay fag over there uh sports cards and he writes books on telling you about fake cards that guy i would bet that he plagiarized half the shit he wrote he probably got books from fucking the 80s uh from dr beckett and psa and all that stuff i've read some of the stuff that he's he's put out there it looks like it's fucking plagiarized. I can't prove it, but uh, if I ever got into digging into that guy, he lives in Florida too. He's another fucking fraud. He's supposed to be a, a sports card investigator and, and letting people know about fake cards and reprints and all that. That guy wouldn't know a fucking fake card if it hit him upside his ass. It's the people he knows that know it. They're teaching him how to do grifting. If he was so concerned about people buying fake cards and stuff like that, he would expose people like Ken uh, Rosen or where the fuck is Golden and all these other people. And, and fucking Blinky over there uh, doing stuff with the freaking 86 box uh, authenticating a box that was clearly searched. And if you think that uh, fucking Blinky authenticated that box and didn't know that that, that Pokemon box was searched and fake... You got another thing coming to you. That was another grift and a scam. But your people are too stupid to realize what's going on. Logan put a fucking... He did, that guy's running amok on YouTube. He's one of the hot, biggest grifters on YouTube. My man, uh, Opossum Buddy, exposed him so bad. He's not supposed to take the card 
the, the, the Pokemon uh, Charizard card out of the vault, but he's wearing it around his fucking neck and trying to sell it to people. And our possum buddy is like, dude, isn't it in the contract that you can't do that? And he's literally reading all the shit that you're not allowed to do that that guy's doing. Our possum buddy's a funny guy. I like him. He doesn't use profanity like me, but I'm mad. And I'm actually calmed down over the last years. You know, I used to be a lot more uh, vocal about it. I could give a shit what this guy thinks about me. And I could give a shit what any of these influencers think about me. Or any of these fucking punk ass bitches. They're a bunch of bitches. Then you got guys coming on my channel. Oh, I didn't say anything about the Tom Brady uh, card that you didn't have. Bitch, you were telling me that I was a fucking scrub and I didn't have pretty autographs and I didn't have what I was saying I had. I don't need to lie about shit like that. You think it makes a big fucking deal in my life that I got some Brady autographs? When that motherfucker retires, I'm going to sell all that shit and buy myself a nice fucking house with it. <laughs> all my Brady... I got boxes and boxes of Tom Brady refractor cards and rookie cards and shit like that. I'm just sitting on it. Same thing I did with Derek Jeter. I just sat on him 279s, and before he got in the Hall of Fame, I was ditching him out, man. I made a nice little chunk of change, and me and Ashley went on a vacation with it. People are so stupid. You idolize, and you idolize the wrong people. If, if they're not good people, and they're not doing stuff to help your world and help your life and your community, don't have nothing to do with them. Don't sponsor these people. And unsubscribe to Jeff Wilson's app that you're paying $50 a month for. So you can't afford that shit. You don't need that app. You can go on eBay and find the same results for free that that guy's doing for you. He's grifting you. That's all they do. Their, their, their family has taught them to get into the, you know, they were doing stock and shit like that because that was the big thing in the 90s. And then, of course, he's a little bit younger than me. He learned how to grift in the stock market, which is the easiest job in the world. <laughs> There's nothing to it. I was doing day stock and winking and killing on it. Why do you think all these people in Congress are making all that money? They pass laws for it. And then they're using that shit to, to fucking make money off the shit that they're passing laws. And they're criminals. And you people vote for that. You vote for your own enslavement. This next video that's coming up in a few days I'm working on, I found it from a guy, a friend of mine, and I haven't seen him in a while, and he gave me permission to use it. I'm going to let you see it, and it's brutal, and you, it, you're sheep. Really, voting is evil. You're voting for evil people. They're worse than any criminal that you know. They're worse than any thug that's in prison. Politicians are the filthiest, nastiest, scum scummiest people on the planet. There is no nice politician. There are no white hats. There is no nice people in the sports car industry, these top influencers. They're all scumbags. They're all fucking grifters. Neo and all that. They all want to get sponsors. They all want to make money. That guy, Dan the Curator, who fucked his own friend over fucking for the Star Wars card. If it was up to me, I would fucking kick that scumbag out of my country and send him back to fucking Korea or wherever he's from. We don't need them kind of people in our, in, our, in our country. Go try that shit in Korea and see what happens. They would fucking cut his head off for that kind of shit over there and take all this fucking money and everything. Fucking cocksucker. These dudes are fucking pussies. They're a bunch of fucking weak pussies. All of them. They're soft as fucking ice cream. And they're, they look like they're fucking alcoholics and drug addicts to me. Most of them when I see them on here. And they want to rag on people, but they can't take it. They can't take, their, they can't take it when someone comes back at them because they're fucking soft. And if you was to look into some of the shit that these people did in their private life, I bet most of them were arrested for DUIs themselves. Anyway, that's what I have to say about that. The Mickey Mantle bullshit, this $12.6 million, someone buying this fucking alcoholic's fucking card and, um, you know, idolizing this dick when he's not even the greatest player ever. The greatest player ever in the history of baseball 
is, you know, without a doubt, Babe Ruth and fucking Barry Bonds. No doubt about it. Statistically, there's nobody even close. And the only person close in modern times, in my, you know, just the, the, the numbers speak for themselves, is Ken Griffey Jr. You think A-Rod's going to get into the fucking Hall of Fame? That scumbag He's another scumbag. A-Rod is the same way he is. But the baseball's full of racism, Pete, racist. And I bet he's a racist too. You know, he ain't sticking up for black people or anybody that's that, that should be in the Hall of Fame or any, anything like that. They got the one guy dropping the N-word, calling people uh, the N-word on freaking at the Nationals, and he's white as fucking snow. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, well, you shouldn't be using, uh, you shouldn't say anything about his mom, and you shouldn't make jokes. But, I can, but this guy can go around and call people the N-word <laughs> on fucking national television, basically. For the whole world to see. Fuck you. I'll say whatever I want to say. And if you got a problem with it. I'll meet up with you you fucking pussy. And I swear I will smack you so goddamn hard. I'll knock your fucking head around. So tired of you motherfuckers. You're such a bunch of pussies. You're weak. And that's why our country's fucked up. We literally have 81 pedos. In, uh, 81 million pedophiles in America. Because 81 million pedophiles voted for Biden. And Biden, and his, when he did his daughter, he should be arrested. It's disgusting to do that to a little kid. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Why the fuck would you support somebody that's evil like that? Why would you support Trump that's evil? There, there's skeletons in that guy's closet. He changed my mind, Trump. When he signed that $5 trillion to the wealthiest people in America. This guy changed my mind by the way he does business and he can't take anything. And he's not doing anything to stop it. He's not doing anything to stop the criminality in our fucking society. And I mean, in our hobby and stuff. They have enough money. And he, apparently, his brother's got two uh, fucking Teslas, which I don't, I highly doubt he bought two of them. Just a flexing. He probably found that he's, he's leasing them. That's what people do. And Rolex watches. Dude, this ain't the 19 fucking 90s, bro. People aren't wearing watches and shit like that no more, really. You, they got a fucking phone. Their phones are just as expensive as somebody's fucking jewelry that's out there. It's outrageous. I appreciate everybody watching. I do. I appreciate all the support. I do, and I, I, I'm i just trying to help. You have to listen and open your mind and, 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 and be realistic about what's going on. They're using you. They just want your money. They don't care about you. They don't even reply, reply to any of your fucking comments when you leave comments on there. And this guy was taking my comments down, or YouTube was, because I was shredding them. Just a bunch of soft motherfuckers is all they are. Just like John said, they're a bunch of sheep and there's just corruption and criminality in this hobby like no one's ever seen. They can fuck off. All of them. I'm going to the Nationals. I'm going to go here. Dude, I hope you do. And this asshole that sold 80, you got robbed for $87,000. Who the fuck gives out $87,000 worth of cards and don't get the money for it, bro? You don't let people walk away from your table with that kind of fucking money. I think that's some kind of grift going on there just to get some publicity in the hobby to get people back into the hobby because people love drama. If there's no thing going on in the hobby, they don't have the reason to watch it. But they, the, the drama videos is what they people love to see in the hobby, and that's what's pulling them back into the hobby. I'm making videos to get rid of the fucking criminality, to get rid of the shit, so people can afford boxes of cards. For instance, I went to Walmart today. I had to buy a couple one touches, and I seen that Walmart has the Bowman football, um, University Bowman football. Okay. Now, they're selling this for like 25, 30 bucks on the internet, shipping. Sometimes they'll do 25 for free. $19. During the pandemic, you would not find none of this shit. And just a couple months ago, these were $25. Okay, so everything's going down in price. 
And uh, I got a couple boxes because one of my friends emailed me that's in Canada and they haven't seen, uh, they wanted to know about the football uh, uh, cards and what they look like. And some of the people that were doing openings, they thought maybe they had opened the box and resealed it. So they didn't know if that's the straight shit that's in it. So I'm going to do an opening and then I'm going to do a giveaway too. I'm thinking of finding out what I can do for a giveaway. You can leave a comment on the, in the bottom and give me an idea of what I can do for a giveaway for you guys supporting my channel and coming and listening and uh, being here. I appreciate that. And I want to give something back. This guy's got 13,000 subscribers. Is he giving anything away to anybody? He won't even give you the time of day. These people are scumbags. They don't give a shit about the hobby. They regurgitate the same shit over and over again. They'll never tell you the truth about Mickey Mantle or any of these people they idolize because they're trying to sell the fucking cards. Fuck Mickey Mantle. Fuck LeBron James. Fuck all them people. They're not nice people. We give a fuck about them. They don't do shit for us. They never have and never will. He's pushing up daisies right now. Probably with Go Face Lucy. So, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I do appreciate your support. And we're going to be doing some uh, NFL football uh, openings here. Uh, I know the NFL is rigged and scripted. But my friends still collect. And they want to see what some of the stuff looks like. And Bowman's back making football cards again. So, they haven't done this in a few years. So, uh, and then I think that there, if you was to buy a couple of those boxes and put them aside for a few years after all this gets uh, sorted out, they could be worth some money because, you know, the Tom Brady Bowman's back in 2000 are, are worth a, a nice little penny and uh, they're, they're pretty sharp looking and stuff. So uh, people buy those and, uh, you know, Brady is uh, going to probably, um, Brady, I already said what I said. I think the Patriots are going to the Super Bowl against Tampa Bay. And I think the Patriots are going to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this year's Super Bowl. And then Brady's going to retire. Just my opinion. But if you are a collector and you want to have an investment and you think that, you know, you, you weren't sure who to buy right now. It would, if you buy, you, you should buy Tom Brady Refractors. Tom Brady rookie cards, if you can afford them, lower end ones, whatever, PSA 5s, PSA 4s, because when that man goes into the Hall of Fame, just before he goes into the Hall of Fame, his stuff is going to be super, super expensive and super valuable. Like, I got this, and I told everybody, this is who I'm going to start using, CSG. I'm going to start using them as my grading company, and then they, they, um, they actually have a different label, but I only pay 25 bucks for this card it's a prison red white and blue and it's a 2020 and people consider this to be his rookie card on a new team which is not he is um he was his rookie cards 2000 but people uh in the hobby consider 2020 to be his new rookie card with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and he won the Super Bowl that year so there's a lot of nostalgia that goes on with this and the pandemic all that goes together it makes the card nostalgic and a piece of history that's why that kind of stuff will be expensive. And you can buy that stuff for $25, $30, put it aside, hold on to it. Make sure you get a, a decent grading company. You know, SC, uh, CSG is going to go up there because they have no scandals going on. And uh, this guy's hating on S, S, uh, SCG because of trimming and stuff. They're all trimmers. PSA, Beckett, all this stuff is crook crooked. They've been doing it for decades. And here's a little fun fact. If you put Dr. Beckett's name in the Germantria, it comes out 666. So there's a little fun fact for you. Um, have fun doing what you're doing. Enjoy your life. Stop following these fucking knuckleheads. And call them out on their bullshit. Don't take no shit off of them. They're not, you know, they're not nobody. They put their pants on just like you and I. And there ain't no different than you and I. And uh, don't let anybody disrespect you because of the way you make a living. You work hard, you deserve respect. I have more respect for my followers and my subscribers that work and do hard work than any politician and any fucking celebrity out there. You're better than any of them. You work for a living and you're a good person. And don't be tricked by this fuckery.